All right, hello again, brethren, and welcome back. By the title of this video, you're probably many of you are probably wondering what's going on. Since not so long ago, I had recently concluded a three-part video series dealing with the subject of COVID-19. As I sought in that series to bring a biblical balance to that to that whole ordeal that we find ourselves still even to, to this day still living through. As I, as I sought to bring a biblical balance to that whole situation and ordeal which we find ourselves living through, even to, us, even to this day, we find ourselves still living through this situation of COVID-19. And for those that did watch that series, and more specifically those that watched the part one follow-up that I did on COVID-19, you remember that at the very, nearing the very end of that segment, I had made mention of Rodney Howard Brown, and I, although only very briefly, because when I was mentioning, when I, when I mentioned his name and who he was, I was making a reference, I was referencing a, a news piece, an article that the TBT, the Tampa Bay Times, had did on, had did on him, and it was mainly due to the fact that during the official COVID-19 lockdown here in Florida, he was one of the pastors that had that were that was still holding live services within his church building, and packed out live services at that. And so, for those again, for those that watched that segment, you you know the remember the accounts and you remember the details of that whole story. Well, after I had um, made that brief mention of, of Rodney Howard Brown, and shortly after I had concluded that whole series, I ended up. Considering, brethren, I was praying about this for the whole last few weeks, and um, and just considering to do a just a whole video dedicated on for the, just for the sole purpose of giving one last word of caution and warning about Rodney Howard Brown, because I don't think I really um, I don't believe I give enough information on him. I don't believe that the, the the word of caution that I gave in that segment, that follow up segment, was uh, sufficient enough, because I wasn't really in that segment. I wasn't really the focus wasn't Rodney Howard Brown. It was on COVID nineteen. But like I said, I, I even though I did make a mention of him, it was only very briefly because because I was simply making a reference to that article, that news piece, and article that the TBT had did had did on him, and so. But like I said, brethren, after you know reconsidering and, and praying about this for over the last few weeks, I decided to do a, a whole video just dedicated on giving you all one last word of caution and warning about him, and also about the charismatic movement and the dangers of the charismatic movement, because what I'm seeing, brethren, in these last days is just so much deception. It, it's just it, it's just incredible that the level of deception, the level of lies and false falsehoods out there that's being put out day, you know, day in and day out, hour after hour. It's just, um, it's just, it's, 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 it's a large, there's a large deception out there. And because I have, and I think I mentioned this before too, this platform that I have here on YouTube, this platform, with this platform comes responsibility. Okay. I'm, and again, I, I know I said this already, I'm not a watchman. I don't consider myself a watchman, but as a minister of the word of reconciliation, and as a as a one that teaches the word of God, I I believe I have a, resp a responsibility to do the duties of a watchman, and part of that duty is obviously to warn you, to warn the body of Christ, and to warn those of you out there, my viewers, my subscribers, about the deception that's rampant in these last days. And when I considered doing this video, I, I thought to myself, you know, Rodney Howard Brown. Here's a here's a a man that's in in my backyard, and he's been he's had this he's been a, the pastor of this uh, river church for many years now, and it's been here right in my backyard. And so, I thought to myself I need to do a, a whole video to give a further clarification on where I stand regarding him, and to also give a warning about the charismatic movement in general because that's the, the movement that is the the denomination, which he is a key, he is a key figure in, 
And you're going to see that as we get further into this study. As we get further into this video today, you're going to see why I say that. And so, like I said, brethren, with, with this media platform that I have here on YouTube, any, not just YouTube, but any media platform, with any media platform comes responsibility. And because I'm, I'm, I'm teaching here on YouTube, because I'm a teacher, I, I teach God's Word, and because I, I, I am a minister of the Word of Reconciliation, I'm going to be held accountable. From, from, from the, for the material, for, the, for what, I, uh, what I have shared and what I've taught. And I'm responsible for, for warning you all out there. And like I said, for do, I'm responsible for also doing the duties of a watchman. Okay? The, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much shall be required. I've been given a lot. I've, I've been given a lot. So just want you all to consider that. You know, I, I, I have a responsibility to, to warn you. And to warn one of those people, the, the, the people that are having caught up in the charismatic movement, and to, um, and to just to speak the truth in love. And uh, also, brethren, as you're going to see today, I have a whole seven-page uh, pamphlet to go through here today. I'm going to be, I basically typed out an outline, and uh, I have, like I said, it's seven pages long, and I'm going to be going through this. So as we get further into this video, you're going to see me referencing this this outline a lot. I'm going to be referencing I'm going to be referencing these notes a lot. So you know, I thought I thought to myself I needed to you know prepare for this study, this video, and um, like with any other study I do. Um, and so I have here, like I said, I have here seven pages of notes to go through, and and so it's going to be a big study. And I'm not even sure if it's going to be. Uh, how many parts can it be? It might be just two parts. I'm, I'm thinking, it might be three parts. I don't know yet. We'll see as we get further into this video. I'll, I'll start to get a better idea uh, how long this, um, this video might take to complete. So, but I also want to say this too, brethren. I do intend uh, to get back into my series on regarding the King James Bible and um, how the, the Word of God and Jesus Christ are one and the same. And uh, concerning their, their relationship and their unity uh, to each other. I definitely intend to get back into that, that study that I've been doing on the King James Bible and, and the, our Lord Jesus Christ and how concerning their relationship and their unity together and their oneness together. Uh, so I definitely intend to get back into that, that study at, right after I complete this video. Uh, and uh, in this, like I said, whether this is a two part, three part video. Uh, series, I, I'm not sure yet, but once I complete this video, I do intend to get back into that, to my study I've been doing on the King James Bible, the Word of God, and on um, the relationship that it has with Jesus Christ, the capital W Word of God. And of course, brother, I also wanted to mention this too, I have decided to basically to to, to spread out the length and the duration of, the whole, of, the, of the, that whole series, and what I mean by that is I'm going to be, once I do get back into section two, where we've been studying how both Jesus and the word of God are both creator, how that Jesus Christ and his word, the Holy Scripture, are both the, the creator of all things. Once I complete that section, then I'm going to be uploading some other videos, uh, uh, just a few different, maybe some uh, hymns and uh, some maybe some more street preaching videos. And then when we get into section three, which we will be dealing with, which will be dealing with how Jesus Christ and the Word of God, the Holy Scripture, are both the the true light, the, the, how they are both light. Um, after I complete that third section, that'll be section three. Once I complete that, I'll be doing another. Uh, I'll be uploading some other videos videos on some different subjects, and then we'll be getting back into the the series on the King James Bible again. And uh, we'll, as we get further through the series, we'll, I'll see, I'll see how often I'll be doing that. So I just wanted to also mention that as well, just in case you all are wondering about my study. I was, I've been doing also on the King James Bible and and our Lord Jesus Christ and how how they're one in, in unity and how they're they are one and how they're in fact one in the same and how they possess the very same attributes. So I just wanted to also give that update as well, brethren. So now, as um, 
as we officially get started with this video today, brethren, I want to go ahead and open up with some scriptures here. And of course, I'm going to be, uh, before I segue and transition back into Rodney Howard Brown in today's video, I'm going to be first giving some, discussing some major issues and concerns regarding the charismatic movement. So we're going to be focusing on the charismatic movement in general first, and then once once I get through these, um, once I go through these major concerns and issues with the charismatic movement, then we'll be segueing and transitioning back over to Rodney Howard Brown, and I'll be doing this. Uh, I'll be doing the same thing uh, regarding him. I have some uh, have an outline of some major issues that he has as well. So, but you'll you'll see what I'm talking about as we get further into the study. But first, I want you to follow me in your, your King James Bible, if you would. Go, please go with me to the first. Um, we're going to open up. I'm going to be uh, opening up this study uh, by reading some scriptures here. So I want you to go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to be reading uh, a passage there from 1 Timothy chapter 4 first. We'll be reading the first three verses there. Again, that's 1 Timothy chapter 4. And again, I encourage you to follow along with me in your King James Bible. All right. So let's go ahead and get started, brethren. First uh, Timothy chapter 4, being in here at verse 1, we read the following here. The scripture says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. You're going to notice that we, as we get into the study about the charismatic movement, we're going to see how the this um, this scripture here is a prophecy of what would happen, what's going on right now in these last days that we're living in. How that many have departed from the faith. How that a lot of people, a lot of Christians, have departed from the faith, and they have given heed to seduce, seducing spirits, uh, other spirits, and doctrines. And doctrines of devils. We're going to see that here. And then it says, we continue reading here in verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So, again, again brethren, we see here, Paul is speaking here. He's saying that the Spirit speaketh expressly. This is the Holy Spirit talking now. The Holy Spirit is warning that uh, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And we see that. We see that very clear today. Many are turning from the faith. They are turning away from the Word of God. They don't want to hear sound doctrine anymore. And they're, they're basically gravitating toward uh, heresy and, and, and false teaching. And a lot of that is rampant. A lot of this, what's going on with the deception, is rampant in the charismatic movement. It's absolutely rampant. And then it says here, in giving, in giving heed to seducing spirits, un unclean spirits, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. So we see that there's a connection between the seducing spirits, the, there's seduction, a lot, of, a, a lot of seduction going on in these last days, where the deception is, is very high. And we see that, there are, uh, that many people are giving heed to doctrines of devils, things that are contrary, absolutely contrary to the sound doctrine that's found in the Word of God. And then we go down to verse uh, two. He's saying, "Speaking lies and hypocrisy." That's very that's very prevalent in the charismatic movement and other heretical movements. They they speak lies and hypocrisy, uh, having their conscience seared with a hot iron because they have resisted the Holy Ghost, and eventually the, the Holy Ghost just allows them to have what they want to have. He, he allows them to have if they want to, you know if they want deception. God is not going to. You know, he's there's going to come a point when God is not going to be dealing with them anymore. He's just going to allow them to have their what they want deception. Verse three it says here, forbidding to marry. Now, this would be this definitely pertains to the Roman Catholic Church that because the Roman Catholics they they forbid their priests from marrying marrying from marrying women, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. That's another thing that the Roman Catholic Church does. They have that thing with they think they call it um they have that one day I think it's a fr Good Friday or and there's a, something it's called something else where they they command their parishioners to abstain from meats. They can only have a certain, I think, fish and some other stuff. Uh, but it says here, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So we see that the, the, these uh, the, these uh, end time, these cults, these these heretical movements will 
will command their followers not, not to marry, and they'll also command their, their parishioners to abstain from meats, okay? Now, if, if, you, if you want to abstain from meat, if you choose to abstain from meats yourself, that's one thing. But to force that upon other people, that's unbiblical. That's, that goes against the Bible, as we clearly see here. So now, brethren, we're going to go to uh, the next scripture we're going to be going to is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 here. And uh, these scriptures, are, these scriptures, these very scriptures are going to be, you're going to see how they line up. They, they, they are in great agreement with each other. They, uh, they complement each other, in other words. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to read basically almost the whole passage here. We're going to go read it down from verse 1 all the way down to verse 24. So let's go ahead and make sure, again, make sure you're following along with me, brethren, in your, own, in your King James Bibles. Always follow, always follow along in your Bibles. It's very important. And the scripture says here the following. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Notice that. Oh, ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Now, uh, he says, be, watch and be sober. That's the, that's the opposite of being drunk. As we get further into this, we're going to see that. That's the opposite of being, you know, careless and, and drunk, having this, uh, this, uh, this slumber, this, this spirit of slumber. Paul commands the Christians here at Thessalonians to be sober and watchful. Let's continue reading here, though. I'll read that again. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to, obsa but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and to be at and be at peace among yourselves. In other words, we're to have a respect for the brethren, a love and a respect for each other. As, as brothers in the Lord, we are to, we are to um, know those who we labor amongst, uh, know their testimony, uh, know their manner of life, their manner of doctrine, and we are to have a, a great love and esteem for them, for the, uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ, those that we labor amongst and serve the Lord together with. Um. And it says here, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. This is also talking about, you know, your respect and love for your pastor, too, as he's a laborer, too, in the gospel, you know, and he feeds you the word of God. So this is also, I believe, this is talking about how we should respect and love our pastors and those, our leaders, our spiritual leaders and our, our, our spiritual elders over us. Um, and verse 13 again, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Verse 14, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, we're always to be in prayer, we're always to strive to be in that mode of prayer unto the Lord. Pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Verse 19, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Let me read that verse 21 again. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. So we see here, there's a lot, lot said here. But Paul writes here to the Christians at Thessalonia. And we notice that he commands them to be sober, to be watchful, to not sleep as, as do others. We are of the day, we're not of the night. 
And we're going to see that what we read here, I'm reading this to, these, these scriptures to you, brethren, to show you there's going to be a sharp contrast of what we see Paul warning, um, exhorting the Christians to do here versus what you see in the charismatic movement. How they talk about being drunk, you know, uh, having this being drunk in the, uh, in the spirit. They talk a lot about, charismatics talk a lot about that, being drunk in the spirit. Well, that's contrary to the Bible. We don't see that anywhere in the Bible where it's talk, it tells us to be drunk in the spirit. We're not to be drunk in the spirit. That's not even possible. We're to be sober. We're to be sober. We're to be watchful. There's no such thing as being drunk in the spirit. The, the, the spirit of God is holy. You got to remember that he, he is the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he's going to teach you about holiness. He's going to give you the grace to live holy and to be sober. But notice here in verse 21, brethren, it says, prove all things. What does that mean? It means exactly what it says. We prove and test all things. And how do we do that? We do that by the authority of Scripture, brethren. No matter what, what you're hearing out there, no matter who's teaching you, you have to prove all things and test all things by the authority of Scripture, by this blessed book here. So now we're going to go over to... Uh, Last scripture here to read is going to be First John chapter four. As we um, first, let's go over to First John chapter four, brethren, and this will be the uh, one of the final. This will probably be the final scripture that we go over here as I open up and as I open up the study. First John chapter four. We're going to read down to verse six, brethren. All right. <clears throat> And the word of God says the following here. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Verse 2. Hereby, we know, uh, hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, ye are of God little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Once again, we uh, we see here, brethren, that there is a lot that John says here in these first six verses of First John four. A lot, and we see here the following. The first, let's go back to verse one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they're of God. So we see here, brethren, we are commanded, we are commanded both to prove all things. We're commanded by, we've been commanded in another place in Scripture by Paul to prove all things. That's what we find in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I believe it's verse 21. And then we find here in 1 John 4, John tells us to try the spirits. We're not to believe every, we're not to believe every spirit, but we're to try the spirits, whether they're of God. And why do we have to do that? Because you have, you have the Holy Spirit of God, and then you have the, another spirit. Kind of what Paul warned about in Galatians, you know. If any man would preach to you another Jesus, or who, who, whosoever would bring another gospel, or whosoever would preach, uh, bring another spirit. See, John is, is warning the, the brethren here that we're not to believe every spirit out there, but we're to try the spirits by the word of God. Same, the same way that we, we, we test the spirits, and we, 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 we test all things and prove all things, is the same way... It's the same thing what we, what we do is how we also try every spirit. And we try the spirits to see whether they're of God by the standard of this blessed book here, brethren. We're to try the spirits to see whether they're of God because not every spirit is of God. And then we go here to verse 2. Hereby we know ye the Spirit of God. That's the Holy Spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. So there's the spirit of God, there's the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And then in contrast, you have another spirit, which is the spirit of Antichrist, which is the spirit of the world, this current present evil world. 
And we see that. There's, that's why there's so much deception. Because a lot of the, the people that are the lost sinners out there, they're under the dominion of Satan. They're under the, the, the spirit of the world. So they're, they're very prone to the deception that's out there. And then it says here in verse 4, we read here again, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that dwells in us, brethren, is greater than the Spirit that's in the world, which is the, the Spirit uh, of the world, the Spirit of Antichrist. The Holy Spirit is greater than the, the uh, Spirit of the world. And likewise, Jesus Christ is greater than uh, the Spirit of the, of the world. And then it says in verse 5, they are of the world, to speak of lost people, the, the false prophets also as well. Of course, if you read the context, it's talking about mainly false prophets. Um, it says, because you see, we see here in verse uh, 1, we go back to verse 1 here. Why, why are we to try the spirits? Because many false prophets, many false prophets are gone out, are gone out into the world. Many false prophets, many false teachers. And so the, the false prophets, the, 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 they have the spirit of the Antichrist. They have the spirit of the world in them. But we, we have the Spirit of God in us, and greater is the Holy Spirit that's in us than the Spirit, the, the, uh, the other Spirit, the Spirit of the world that's in the false prophets. Verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Why? Because they don't have the Spirit of God in them. Hereby know we the Spirit of truth and the Spirit of error. We know the Spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, and we know that the, the spirit that the false prophets have is the spirit of error, the spirit of Antichrist. So I wanted to open up with these scriptures, brethren, to show you that we as Christians, brethren, we are to be students. We are to be students of the word. We are to be students of the Holy Scripture. And when you read through those scriptures, as you go, I would encourage you after you watch this video, read through those scriptures again and ask yourself this question, brethren. Am I truly a, a, a serious student of the word of God? Am I truly... One that studies the scriptures. Am I truly one that tries the spirits, knowing that many have departed from the faith in these last in these latter times? Many have gone after seducing spirits. Many, many have given heed to doctrines of devils. Christians have gone after these these uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. A lot of Christians have. Why? Because they have to, they have departed from the Word of God. So what you got to ask yourself, brethren, is: Am I going to be mindful? and be serious and be sober enough to try the spirits to see whether they're of God? Am I going to prove all things and, and hold fast that which is good? Because if you, if you, if you want to, if you, if you don't want to be deceived, brethren, then you got to follow, you should be following these commandments in, in the scriptures that we just read. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Every, everything that you hear, whether it's from your pastor a minute, another minister that you highly respect and love, whatever you hear, you got to compare it to the Scripture. You, have, you always compare it to the authority of Scripture. That's how you try all things and prove all things. That's how you try the spirits to see whether they're of God. Because as as John said in 1 John 4, 2, or 1 John 4, 1, many false prophets, many false teachers have, have gone out into the world. And we're going to be looking at some of them today. In this study, we're going to be looking at some of these these false teachers and these false prophets. But one thing you got to remember, brethren, ask yourself this question. Am I a student of the Word of God? Am I a Berean? Do I search the Scriptures daily to see whether, whether these things are so? Very important to do that. So, now, brethren, we're going to go ahead. Um, it's going to, again, go by my outline here now. Go, go back to it. Now, I'm going to be... Going over, I'm going to be reading out four major concerns that I have with the charismatic movement. There's many more, there's many more, but I wanted to give you four major concerns that I have that I believe are very crucial concerns regarding the whole charismatic movement and deception out there. And so I'm going to first read all four of them, and then we're going to go over them, um, go back to them and go over them each, go over them each more, a little more thoroughly. Okay. So he, these are the four major concerns and issues with the charismatic movement. Number one, the charismatics do not hold the Holy Scripture in high regard. It can be said that they put personal prophecies and extra-biblical teachings and extra-biblical leadings on the same level or even on a higher level than they do the written Word of God. Number two, 
The charismatics put more emphasis on personal experiences. As a result, the, the charismatics put more emphasis on personal experiences, personal prophecies, so-called open, so -called open visions, extra-biblical leadings, manifestations, and the spirit and the spirit than they do on Bible doctrine. Number three, the charismatics fail to rightly divide the word of truth. Number four, in the charismatic movement, much heresy and false teaching, false prophecy continues to be spread and is never corrected. In the charismatic movement, much heresy and false teaching and false prophecy continues to be spread and is never corrected and dealt with. It's within the charismatic movement, that is. So now, brethren, let's go back to number one. The charismatics do not hold the Holy Scripture in high regard. Although they may profess that they do, they really do not in their practice. We're going to see why again as we go through the study. It can be said that they put personal prophecies and extra-biblical leadings and their experiences on the same level or even on a higher level, I would say on a higher level, than they do the written Word of God, than they do the Holy Scripture here. Charismatics are known, known for doing that. So, um, having... As we go through this first, as we as we go back to this first major concern, brethren, I'm going to be playing to you a video here that was sent to me not too long ago. It was sent to me by uh, an acquaintance of mine that I know, a lady, an elderly lady, and I believe she's saved. I do believe she's saved. I do believe she's a Christian. Sadly, though, she's been very deceived because she she comes out of the she came out of the charismatic movement. This lady that I know, and. Uh, she basically went from the charismatic movement and she transitioned into the Hebrew roots movement. So basically she went from one, one heretical movement into a whole nother heretical movement, sadly. And this lady, I've known her for many, many years now. And she's just, sadly, she's just very messed up doctrinally. And she's not, she does not really take the time to study and rightly divide the word of truth like she should. Um, again, that, and it's, again I, I say this very with... Uh, uh, it's very sad considering her her condition because she's she's an elderly lady, you know. She's 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 up there in age. 